Yeah, Smoking Girl Lounge, how's it going? Yeah, so we're, you know, primping and prepping here. Um, anyway. Cloudy day here in L.A. Yeah. Well, for the moment, it's supposed to burn off a little later. Is it May gray, June bloom, and I don't know what July is. July high. I don't know. Anyway, I, I don't know, but it's pretty crazy. We had, like, half a sunny day for the 4th of July or whatever. I mean, I was working for most of it anyway, so... What is this uh, special stick you brought up for us? So my friend, I've already smoked one of these. So um, anyway, he gave me two, and I wanted to share this with you. And this is okay. We have talked about this, puff puff pass, mm -hmm. where you kind of like, I don't know about you kids out there, but if you've ever smoked a joint and you puff it and pass it or whatever, kind of do that with cigars too. The cigar version of that. Right. So you try and be as polite as possible. So but today's joint is? Well, you describe it and all that kind of stuff. Because I know you're more of a hands-on kind of a... Honestly, it is silky. It. It is, it's the Padron Millennium, as you know from the title of the video you clicked on. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, so individually numbered, serial numbered. I'm assuming you'll, you have a close-up of this uh, for everybody to look at. Uh, do it up there, too. Like, you can do the that? I don't know. Put Can your hand behind if it. I, if I do this? No, no. It's kind of washed out. Oh, there we go. Yeah, there we go. So. Yeah. Um, so individually numbered, it's number 079433. How many of these did they make? I don't know. You know, hundred thousand. I think that you're about right on that hundred thousand. Yeah, yeah, for the one. And, but I don't think that they mean a hundred thousand of the naturals. Oh yeah, you may be right. Because the natural, because the Maduro is the one that's the more prevalent than the natural. Mm -hmm. And this was the humidor that you were could empty out and then refill, right? Isn't this? No. No. Okay. That's the fiftieth. That's the fiftieth. Okay. Yep. And the cigars in the fiftieth are massive. They're much bigger than this. Okay. Um, it says uh, limited edition on the side of the Padron logo, and then it has a cursive the word Millennium written out. And apart from that, it looks like an anniversary gun. It looks like a 64 or a 26 or whatever. Yeah. Um, box press, really, you know, blocky box press. You can see right there. Um, and so uh, beautiful smooth wrapper, right? Star. Yeah, so, so smooth. Ooh, some veins, but not uh, not prominent. This is sexy, though. Really? Really, I mean, a sexy it looking really cigar, is. right? I it mean, really and is. it's in fantastic shape. Well, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. How old is Because I told my friend, you better give me some good cigars or else. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's, a, he's a really good, he's a good, you know. I just actually, I met him uh, recently, but we've become really good friends. He lives down in Florida. And when I have a layover in Florida, we try and get together for stuff. So as you were talking about with the whole, um, you know, you get together, you have a cigar or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. We kind of exchange stuff. So, so did these come out in 2000? Whatever his, he, and this guy definitely gets like, yeah, so, yeah, it's. So it was the Millennium Millennium. This is the Millennium, like yeah. The millennium. No, this is the, 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 the one and only beginning of the batch kind of a thing, too, so. Um, and it's the natural, so it's the more rare of the two. So. Um, right, it smells really good. It smells kind of. I just love this foreplay. I just love spicy it. It's awesome. and Almost the same thing. On I feel the, like a voyeur. It's rabbit. almost like I want to cover my eyes with this thing. I'm just saying. Wait till you see what I do with it when you turn around. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what should we do for a cut? Should Whatever we punch you want to do with this cigar is, you know. I think we should do a punch. Go for it. Go, go not right that ahead. not that Padron ever has uh, any issues with draw. We know that mm -hmm. it's gonna it's gonna draw like the wind. But I think maybe if we punch it, we will do potentially less damage to the cap since it's just a single cap. Sure. And I'm just gonna, I'm not even gonna dig in there too far because again, I think if we just probably remove just that much, yeah. it's probably gonna be good. And it is, it's great. Okay, awesome. So That's the Zykar 11 We'll be right punch. back though, hold on. Okay, so we gave it a nice punch right there and uh, as expected, yeah. perfect draw on the Padron, because they're never plugged. Not a perfect draw, but the mm, a perfect draw. An ideal With a draw. T. <laughs> the small P. Perfect. Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, 
What do you know about uh, the cigar in the blend? We, we found out where you got it from. I don't know. I think it was super secret. I don't think that the Millennium, I mean, I, don't, I didn't really look it up. Mm -hmm. I, I haven't done anything on this at all other than the fact that, you know, smoke one. Yeah. Um, well, uh, extremely rare cigar. Very hard to find. Uh, pricey if you could find one, right? Oh, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. So we're lucky to have this from yeah. a friend down in Florida. Exactly. Now, let me see what Halfwell has to say. Uh, was described similar to the 64, albeit a bit more bold in flavor, and the tobacco used was already aged for five years before it was rolled into the cigars. While the vast majority of the cigars released were rolled with the Maduro wrapper, there were some rolled with the natural wrapper as well, but they were extremely difficult to find. Close to 16 years later, the company announced it was releasing another batch of Padron Millenniums that had been aging in the company's humor since the original release, carrying the name Padron Reserva Millennium. So that's not this. Right. This that's, is the original. That's the original. So that's that. Let me see. A thousand so this humidors of a thousand, a hundred cigars. So yeah, it's a uh, hundred thousand cigars. Oh, okay. Yeah. But this was, I mean, even at the time that it came out, this was the rare one. Oh yeah. 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 Definitely. That was the rare one. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. So I had to like, I don't think you're going to be getting so much water effect and I had to water the rocks a little bit there. Oh, actually, I think the water right down there. It's coming through. But anyway, you know, film stuff. I don't know. Dave likes to water the rocks. Yeah. It looks better. It really makes us pop. Yeah. We like to pop. Definitely like popping. Mm. I'm not going to turn the camera off. I'm just going to move this table over here. Bye. When did you um, when did you smoke one before? Was it when you were down there? Or no, no, no. After? I smoked it here. He gave it to me because we do like a little, um, you know, tr not a trade out, but more of a like just you know, hey, I got you know what guys do, right? They, I got this. Oh, here you go. Oh, look, well, here you go. You know. You have to right. It's like it's like, it's like this is my precious. Yeah. My, my precious. precious. My precious. Take my precious. Please take my precious. We know you're smoking most of your preciouses because the video proof is there. Uh, well, I mean, I get small amounts of that stuff, but I mean, I try like, uh, I try it and I've been holding on to something because I got one more person that, with the Calibra to smoke that with. So, and I got... Is that um, a current production uh, Calabra? That's the Partagas Calabra. It's the braided, uh, three cigars braided together. That's still going, because I think it's an LCDH thing oh, now. Oh, no, so they, they are still making them. Yeah. But, like, is yours an older one, or is it a new one? No, it's the original release of the, well, the original re-release of the Partagas Calabra from 2007. Oh, that's special. Yeah. You know, I've, uh, not the It's word. very precious, and I want to, like, shake it. <laughs> you know. But I've you always... guys are fucking like it's hard to get all three of us together we'll get we'll get together and do that um uh, the the few that i've smoked i think i've probably split three of them maybe in my life the glibbers um they all smoke really well i mean you look at them and they're all gnarled and yeah naughty and whatever um but not only do they smoke fine they actually have tasted really good for not an expensive cigar i remember in cuba paying like 14 dollars for one you know, for three for cigars. That box three, yeah. 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 For the box? Uh -huh. How much does a, a box uh, typically go for a coffin? Uh, I want to say about 30 bucks. Yeah. Somewhere around there, about 90 for the nine. So, okay, 90 for the nine. That sounds right. Yep. About 10 bucks a stick. 10 a stick. They are. So, but that's like on the normal kind of whatever market. And then you've got Europe, which is probably more. Mm -hmm. And then in Cuba, it's probably like 60 bucks for a box of nine, I would think, somewhere around 54. There's a price list that the guy does a pretty good job on. Is, um, yeah, it's actually less than that. It's going to be like 45. Yeah, I mean, in, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, are we going to do a video review of the Calibra, or is that just something we're going to smoke? You know, at this point, it, I mean, it would be nice. I already did with the two uh, original members of the lounge in my garage. Um, we did the Different Calibra. Calibra. No, the same one. And they, and we were all kind of like a little bit underwhelmed by it. But um, these ones... But I've it been... wasn't an original release, was it? No, no, it was the same. Oh, it was same, the exact same? same. Yeah, so exact same. Com... Oh, yeah, I had a couple of coffins of them that I brought back from Hong Kong. Ah, 
So we were a little bit underwhelmed on that one. And it's just like, um, you know, when I was in Hong Kong, I smoked that Boulevard Gold Medal a few times and it was like, and it was from 07, it was like a bit underwhelming. Well, maybe they just passed their prime. Uh, I don't think necessarily might have been past a prime. Like the Boulevard Gold Medals had a little bit of that sour taste and a little less, I mean, because you would think a Boulevard is supposed to be earthy and fruity and so on and so forth. And it really was more sour. So I don't know. Maybe, I don't know. How's that cigar? You're not the world's biggest Partidus fan either. I am not, but I am a Boulevard fan. But we're talking about the Culebra. Well, we're talking about the gold medals too, yeah. right? But the Culebra, um, the Culebra. You need another minute on. Let's talk about other things. Let me let me get sure. into this about half Sure. Things. Yeah. No problem. Um, but yeah, I mean, anyway. So. You were asking about Quintero. So Quintero y yes. Hermanos. Actually, I feel like we should The brothers talk about Quintero. Quintero are the ones that started that. It was like, you asked me that, and I was like, gee, I don't know. But it was like, after, like, I'm just like, because I go through in the video, and I'm like, what the hell? I mean, it's it's Quintero y Hermano. That's the brand on the box. So it's the brothers Quintero, and they started the brand back in the day, and, and the rest is history. Did they start it in Cuba? I assume they were Cuban. And I don't know if they were Cuban. I think they were like Spanish or Spanish? Uh, something like that. I'd yeah, there's a bunch that. of Spanish people went to Cuba. Yeah. Cigar. Yeah. yeah. Um, so is the is it one of these hundred year old brands? Quintero's been around a long time. Yeah. 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 The um, from Quintero. Yeah. So Quintero, you may have seen them before. Uh, it's got a red band, Quintero, written kind of diagonally across it, um, and they are a cheap cigar, uh, machine made mostly. Yeah, they and back in the day they used to have handmade some handmade models and machine made models back in the day, but yeah, it's all machine, machine made now. So you can get the, a box of twenty five for like cheap, cheap, yeah, sixty bucks. Something yeah, like that. they're cheap. Yeah, definitely. But like, I mean, if you go over to if you're in Canada, I think they're about eight bucks a stick, eight well, or nine bucks a stick you know in what? Canada. I'll smoke in Canada with those tobacco taxes. I'll smoke a $9 Cuban tobacco cigar. Yeah, exactly. I don't care if it's short filler, machine made, whatever. I mean, yeah. and you then, know as well as anybody, yeah. once you put some age on Cuban tobacco, it doesn't really matter what form it's in, right? It's yeah. going to taste the way it's going to taste. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's whenever I'm up in Toronto visiting my relatives, I definitely, you know, I kind of shy away from getting the mainline stuff where I'm paying $30, $40 prices. a stick for the you know mainline stuff. And it's like... You know, uh, I'll just smoke a Quintero. It's like nine bucks or whatever it is. It might be a little bit more, but the bottom line is it's the cheap stick, and I'm gonna get that Cuban feel for it. And it's a, to me, a Quintero's a great stick. Well, you and I, let's smoke a couple of Quinteros at some point, and let's review them because I feel like they get short shrift from the cigar community. They've gotten short shrift from me. I've probably smoked two or three in my life. I've never smoked an aged one. I don't know if you have anything that's you know got a few years on it. I mostly smoke just well, the new ones because the our buddy from London, Mitchell, is coming out here soon, and I've got a couple of boxes. I got a box of Boulevard Panatellas and a box of Quintero Favoritos. So um, yeah, I mean, I was gonna I'm gonna do the Quinteros on the other one with the unboxing and everything mm -hmm. like that, but we can smoke one of those on camera too, and you can check it out. I feel like it would be good because we, we also, we've talked about, you know, smoking some less expensive cigars uh -huh. and less expensive, you know, Cuban cigars could be a, a good, uh, it, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Um, plus, I'm just curious about smoking them and I want to smoke one with you and get your thoughts on it. Obviously, I can watch your video, but it's more fun to smoke with you. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. So, I mean, and I got to remember that because he said to email him like a couple of weeks before he comes out so that he can bring the boxes over. So I just haven't been able to pick up a London layover trip to just go there and pick them up mm -hmm. and fetch them. Right. But uh, yeah, yeah, anyway. So getting close to an inch on this, lily white ash, mm -hmm. look at that. Yeah. Um, definitely not a Cuban. Uh, has a little bit of that kind of coin, coin stack thing that we were talking about. Coin stack ash, ago. yeah. Um, but also really smooth. It doesn't even look real. I mean, like, I, it's, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, it does not spooky. even look real. Like someone painted that ash on there. <laughs> I mean, it looks like a cartoon ash. Like, yeah. like, uh, 
I don't know, some cartoon character smoking a cigar and it's got a white ash on there. That's insane. Now, it's a beautiful cigar. The construction is great. It's very typical Padron cigar, right? It's, it's not super heavy. Uh, it's got a wind tunnel draw. Um, it smokes really well. The smoke's it's dry. It's not super copious. But I'll tell you, I don't know what this thing tasted like 19 years ago or 20 years ago when it came out. There isn't that much flavor left on this, <laughs> it seems like. I mean, <laughs> that's why I wanted it. I wanted you to do it because, yes. I mean, it's good that we're going to smoke something after this, and, and this isn't the second cigar, right? Because. No, that's why I wanted to taste. do this first because I've already smoked one, so I know pretty much what you're getting on that thing, and it isn't a whole lot. I mean, it's I like. Mean, it's smooth. I mean, you can. Yeah, but it's very new. Okay, so what I, my, one of my descriptors would be it's very nuanced. Right? It's a very nuanced cigar. That's a way of saying, like, you really got to think about what you're tasting. Like, otherwise. a Cuban Davidoff is a very nuanced cigar for me. Now. Yeah. 30, yeah. 40 years later. And every single Cuban Davidoff that I have smoked has been a nuanced cigar. From And I've smoked a lot of Cuban Davidoffs. So, just saying. And, you, you know, anyway... It's it's they're not I've they're very a new, lot extremely of Cuban nuanced. Davidoffs. I'm gonna put that on your brain. Well, I, you know what though, I don't smoke them anymore. I mean, if someone will give me one, uh, it's I'll smoke it. But I'm not gonna go and pay the the exorbitant Great. amounts of money. How much uh, how much body compared to this would you say? A I'm Cuban Davidoff. Yeah. Similar. Probably a little less than that. Whoa, really? Yeah. Well. Don't pay good money for Cuban Davidoffs if that's... Well, I mean, that. but you know what, though? I'm just a knucklehead with an opinion on the Internet. Yeah, so there's a lot of people... you smoked a lot of vintage it, stuff. It doesn't matter. To me, okay, you know what, and whatever. But, I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, yeah. like... Yeah, well, now, Dunhill is a different story. The Cuban Dunhills, the Don Candido, and, you know... Oh, all you the, love the Don Candido. Yeah, and but I do like... I mean, the Estupendo is probably... It, one of the top cigars I've ever smoked, the Dino Estupendo. And it's, I mean, it's a very, very expensive cigar, but it's sort of worth the one-time pop of doing that because it's just such a good cigar. Over $100? <laughs> Ten over, times that. Over $1,000? Ten times that, yeah. Holy crap. That's crazy. But they're extremely rare. I mean, like... Um, you know what, they were manufactured, I guess, roughly in 84, they said. But, I mean, I have been, rumor has it, that they really didn't do, get into production, full production on that cigar until, like, after 84, like, 85, 86. And then they stopped making it way before 91. Actually, it might have been, they, they went into full production in 84, and then production pretty much curtailed off by 86, 87. And... From 87 to 91, I don't know how much production they had on that cigar, but um, the that's why they're extremely the rare. Well, the Dunhill line in general. Yes, right. Um, and so they, that's, they're extremely rare. They're, I mean, the Davidoff, I mean, you can find those everywhere. I mean, not everywhere, but you can find the Cuban Davidoffs. But to try and find a, a Cuban Dunhill, uh, it's pretty hard. Well, Mitchell has them in his auction uh, fairly regularly. Not as much as the Davidoffs, as you said. Um, I've actually never had either. Yeah, well, so I, don't I mean... So I don't have any frame of reference, but if you're saying that that like uh, an average Davidoff today from, say, the 80s, early 90s, um, has less body than this, I mean, you're right, it's nuanced. If you really, if you, if you go into your head and into your own nose and you think about what you're tasting, it's the kind yeah. of cigar that has a refinement that if you were to give a cigar to somebody who doesn't smoke a lot of cigars, needs something light, um, but also is kind of a refined person just in general with a really good palate that's good at picking out stuff, maybe that's the right person for this? I don't even know if that would... Yeah, I mean, it would... Like a wine drinker? Maybe, but... I mean, they would have to really be able to retro the hell out of that cigar and like Which really. Which you can. I mean, it's it's smooth as silk. Oh yeah. Through the nose. Oh yeah, that cigar is Beautiful definitely smoke. it's uh, you know, you can retro that thing all day long. 
which to me, you know, but it's just a nuanced cigar. I mean, it's just definitely a lot, not a lot of um, stuff yeah. in there. So two, two things uh, to think about. One, when a cigar is aged by the manufacturer, you should probably smoke it when they release it, right? This is, was five-year aged tobacco when it was released. They were made to smoke right then. Second thing, non-Cuban cigars just really aren't meant to be aged by the purchaser in general. I, Opus may yeah. be an exception, but apart from that, you don't want to sit on expensive Padrones or any other, you know, non-Cuban cigar. Well, I mean, as far as a rarity, like kind of baseball card, collectible kind of a thing, yeah, sure. I mean, that's something that even if you don't smoke it, it's probably going to go up in value over the years because it's so rare, maybe. Um, and people are really fanatics about Padron, so if you're a Padron collector and you're collecting all the Padron stuff, you're definitely going to want to have a humidor mm -hmm. of that. Um, but yeah, New World stuff, um, just... And the thing is, though, maybe getting into the, this newer Cuban stuff, there's a possibility also with that being more refined coming out the gate. Um, you're not getting a lot of... It does have some interesting flavors. Like, they're super subtle. But they're interesting, and that just makes me—it makes me weep a little bit that I didn't get to smoke this in its prime, because I'm wondering. I mean, it might have been spectacular. Oh, I'm sure. What? I mean, don't they? I mean, that they say that their cigars are ready to smoke when you buy them, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that was—that's their claim like to fame. Age cigar. That's their claim to fame, mm -hmm. right? Is you buy our cigars, you smoke it now because mm -hmm. it's ready to smoke. It's right. not something that you would age. All Cuban cigar manufacturers say that, basically. I mean New World? I mean New World. Yeah. New World. You got me using your, your jargon. Yeah. I mean, look at the construction. Razor sharp arm. Just perfect. And again, that, that comically white ash. I know. It's like totally hilarious. It really is. You want to take a, yeah. a couple puffs I mean, on this? I've been waiting for you to hand it over here. I mean, I don't know. I mean, you've been <laughs> kind of bogarting that joint, my friend. <laughs> so it's like, yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm like such a kicker Asher Otter offer, too. So we're going to try and keep the. Ash. Well, who knows how long that's going to stay. I think on. it's going to stay. I mean, this is really well constructed cigar. I mean, this has got this. The construction of this cigar is amazing on this cigar. It might be the smoothest retro hail of any cigar ever. Yeah. Between the the fineness of the tobacco originally and then the age. Yeah. Now, do you get, I mean, because I'm getting a little bit of a, of a sweetness on this cigar, but normally on a Padron, do you normally get a kind of a, of like a heavy, maybe more of like a the darker, like maybe dark fruits or a cocoa, maybe kind of a... Yeah, like, I mean, it's so hard to tell because the intensity is so low on this cigar. Yeah. And most Padron cigars, even a 26 or a 64, a really good Padron cigar, much more intense than this. Oh, yeah. And there's, you know, it, it increases the complexity and it also can overshadow things like a, like a delicate sweetness that we're kind of tasting on this. So, yeah. no, this <sighs> really doesn't taste like a Padron to me. Right? Okay. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I mean, normally with a Padron, I get more of that heavier kind of, um, I don't know, earthy, like more on the earthy side of the spectrum for me uh, on a Padron with the pepper um, and, like, cocoa but it's not necessarily a really sweet cigar as opposed to like a dominic like the um, like the fuente stuff can be sweeter you know it has more of a sweetness to it and in there especially when you start getting into some of the more um higher end fuentes like the the don arturo grand what don arturo Grand Anniversario, I believe. Yeah, the Destino a Siglo, the yeah. kind of stuff, the Amistad. With the grandfather on the band. Mm -hmm. I mean, that one is really, I get that heavy, kind of like raisiny, cinnamony. The blue kind band, of, yeah. Yeah, really. Not the ones, though, at Casa Fuente, though, but the ones that Keith Park gets in his sets. For some reason, the, the sticks that come in Keith Park sets are. Who's Keith Park? Uh, Prometheus uh, cigars. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, God of Fire. Mm -hmm. He's the guy that does all that stuff. The like five, six cigar gift set type thing. Yeah, yeah, he does the in there. Like they go all the the part of the money goes to the charitable foundation. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, those ones, those little really nice, pretty box oh, sets. They're gorgeous. Yeah, but those the ones in there seem to be a, just a different 
cut of Opus, Forbidden X, whatever you want to call it mm -hmm. on there. So, um, yeah, just a different, but anyway, those ones, yeah. The ones at Casa Fuente, I wasn't that thrilled about. I mean, if I go to Casa Fuente... Casa Fuente branded uh, cigar that in, you can only get there? In Vegas? No, no, in Vegas they do have the, the blue banded oh, they, Fuentes The regular there. Fuente stuff, yeah. So and, those who weren't as impressed as the ones they actually came no, out of... No, it had a different... Pack. And maybe it was just, I don't know, maybe the, <clears throat> the dryness of the area, because it's Vegas? I don't know. Well, I'm sure the humidor at Casa Fuente is aces, just as this humidor that this cigar came out of also, I mean, clearly, this was a perfectly maintained cigar. Um, but uh, it also could be the, uh, the batch. Um, you know, you could be smoking cigars from one year to the next, uh, and I find that in non-Cuban cigars, Fuente has the most, uh, Opus has the most um, range. Mm. Um, some years, I remember, Two years ago, maybe 2016, Christmas uh, Opus release was just it was spectacular. Immediately, right, right off the truck, I smoked them the day they arrived at the lounge. They hadn't even had time to settle into the humor or anything, mm -hmm. and they were amazing. And you know, they got bought up really fast. And then some years, you're like, well, why am I paying thirty dollars for this cigar? Yeah, yeah, it's pretty crazy. But yeah, so yeah, I mean, could have been a lot of things though. But but the thing about it is, is Keith Park stuff is consistently good. Yeah. Like you get one, a box of his stuff from whatever year that you get it from, and all that his stuff, it's like it's good. It's in the thing, you know. I don't know. I, I just I don't know about that. I mean, and I know on a lot of the Fuente stuff, like the 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 lower cost Fuente stuff. Mm -hmm. That's a big straw, by the way. <laughs> this is the only sign of straw that they had at the 76 station, and that's all the way down in there. I mean, that's like, oh my god, it's funny, it's funny. I feel like I'm two feet away from right? I mean, It's kind of funny. But, uh, like, uh, I think that they have enough tobacco, and then they have, that they can blend, like an A58, for example. Like, when you buy an A58, um, it doesn't matter to me whether I buy an E58 now or two years ago or two years in the future. They seem to have that same kind of profile to them. They have the farm, they have <laughs> right? control of all the tobacco. I mean, right. they but should the be able Opus, to be consistent. They don't have probably all of that backlog of tobacco like they do with the other stuff, to your point. And that's probably why some years can be so good and some years can be so crappy. Yeah. Well, plus with the Opus, they've got to age that stuff, so... They can't just keep throwing it. Um, so let's talk about collecting. Neither you nor I is a cigar collector. We're cigar smokers. If you give us a cigar, we're not going to stick it in a special drawer and sit on it for years and leave. We're going to light it and smoke it. Pretty much, um, yeah, for the most part. And I understand the collector mentality because growing up I collected comic books, I collected magic cards, you know, magic gathering cards, and you know, I, I had that, and I'm kind of glad that I don't have that with cigars because I'm so into, like if I looked at this cigar and it was, it was sitting in my new door for a couple weeks, I'd be like, that's a wrong millennium, I've never even seen one of these before, I really want to know what that tastes like. Obviously this would be disappointing, um, but I'm also glad that I don't have a box of a hundred of these that are all going to be disappointing, you know, sitting there waiting for me. Well, I mean, if, yeah, they're good trade. I mean, yeah, I, I, there's a lot of people that want that cigar because there's a lot of Padron fans out there, just like there's I'm a lot a of... Padron fan. But, but I, yeah, so, I mean, I mean, there's just certain things, like, even though, you know, I've talked about Cuban Davidoff, there's still a ton of people out there that want Cuban Davidoff. And, I still uh, want one. So that's what I'm saying. So it's kind of like that. I, I trust forbidden. your judgment. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, anyway, so you got fans of various brands and so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, they're going to be out there uh, collecting that stuff up and snapping it up, <clears throat> you know, and, and doing it. So Now, having said that, if you, you know, again, if you really go, on, go into the retro hill on this, there's a lot of hay, but there's also some vanilla. Mm. It's not a, a, a like a sweet oil slick down the tongue type vanilla, but it's more of a effervescent in the nose. Yeah. You know, um, vanilla sort of 
like if you had uh, atomized vanilla extract in the air, kind of that kind of a taste. Mm -hmm. I am going to ash this because I'm a little bit worried about it. Okay. Do you, you feel like I know because you're, you're very coughed, so. You're right. That's really holding on there. Yeah, like I'm I not said, gonna ash it. Well, you might Actually have broken the seal a little we'll bit there see. too. So if it falls on me, I deserve it. Yeah. But uh, yeah, that ash is. Yeah, the construction rough. on that thing. When I, I the one that I smoked before this was, I've got an ash about that long, and it was just like really. I was like, wow, that's a great ash. Great construction. You know, everything about this cigar, mm -hmm. except the intensity of the body, is other level. It's a 11 out of 10. Well, yeah, I mean, I smoked, what was it when I smoked a cigar? It was like, oh, a Belinda. I smoked a Belinda Corona. You and your cheap Cubans. And, well, I mean, I smoked a Guantanamera, and that was actually not a bad cigar. I mean, it actually had some really good flavor to it and everything like that. But the Belinda, the Belinda Corona was like, I mean, it had a tons of bodies. Because to me, body is the retro through the nose. Strength is what's on the palate and on the tongue. That's to me is what body is for me. Body is the whole flavor profile that's going, you know, the intensity and strength of that, whether it's full bodied or medium bodied or light bodied. And then the strength is what's left on the palate for me. Especially because with a cigar like that, especially because we're talking a 19 year old cigar now, Plus the five-year-old tobacco. We're talking about a twenty-four-year-old cigar. So the old tobacco in this cigar. So the nicotine in that is gone. There's no nicotine. So when you talk about strength, like on that's, a new that's to me that's what strength is. It's like are you are you gonna get lightheaded? Is there nicotine in right. here? And both the body and the strength seem to be gone. Right. So yeah, so for you body is the overall, intensity what's left on the, the palate, like the flavor, yeah. the overall intensity of flavor on both the palate and the, and the retro. Yes. Whereas with me, body is just what's there in the retro and what I'm getting in that whole thing there. And then strength, because I do smoke a lot of um, cigars that don't have a lot of nicotine left in them, is what's the intensity of flavor on the palate because I'm not getting nicotine, I'm not getting buzz. So like a lot of people would say, oh, that's a very light string cigar. Right. Whereas for me, like I smoked a San Luis Rey Corona from the 1970s, the body and strength were both full, but it wasn't because of the nicotine, it was just because it was just right. like slapping my tongue with all of this flavor yeah. and my and I was getting all of that out the nose too. But so it's not it's not just the finish, it's the actual while you're while you're puffing the strength that you're feeling on, on yeah, the Yeah, well you get the strength and finish on the palate. Yeah, absolutely, strength and finish on the palate of that. Now when I go over now the thing about it is what gets really confusing was when you smoke like a really young uh, New World cigar, now I kick over to strength as being that nicotine buzz and everything like that. I kinda kick it over that way, that way, because because there is that nicotine in there and there is that that other factor in there um, and so strength for me on that would be to your to more to your thing there where it's like okay I'm lightheaded um, it's kind of like got a little bit of a buzz going and mm -hmm. it's like yes this this muy fuerte or medium fuerte right and then the, the body would be like the finish and all of the other stuff in there so I mean but and that's the thing too is that um, I think that's what gets confusing with everybody because um, we all are like diamonds. We have many facets. Let's just say that. Well, also, you know, it, it would be nice if there was more, I mean, even between you and I here on the same show reviewing cigars, we have slightly different definitions of things. Mm -hmm. And I feel like strength and body is one of those things that you can watch 10 different review shows and everybody has a different de definition. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's confusing. It because is, right? Ultimately, yeah. if you're a person who's like, oh, I want to know what it's like because I'm probably never going to smoke a Padron Millennium, probably never even see a Padron Millennium natural like this. Right. I want to know what that's like. So we've got to at least define our terms, okay. even if they're different. So strength for me on this thing here is kind of a light plus strength on the palate light because plus. there's really not much. Body is like... A light plus to medium body somewhere in there because there is when you know when you get a good retro on that cigar, there is at times where you do get some flavor. It's wrapped up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Already yeah. In less than two inches. But to me, it's it's the strength wise. I mean, the finish on the palate and, and all of that stuff has just been like, it's just so washed out 
Pretty good cigar if you're going to do a long ash contest. Expensive one, but... <laughs> I don't know how much this thing costs, but they're pretty expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, it's ramping up, and it's making me curious about yeah. where the cigar is going to go. Oh, don't baby it and smoke it up and down just for the ash. It was holding on. Like, I banged it against the ashtray. Oh, perfect, uh, perfect timing. I banged yeah. it against the ashtray, and I couldn't get it to drop. Yeah. So. I mean, that's a pretty freaking big ash there. You can almost... Yeah. I mean, that's, I don't know how many times I've been able to do that with a cigar. That's pretty amazing. Um, Good stuff. So, I was smoking last night with a group of friends. And somebody was telling me that they were smoking a cigar with somebody. And it was a cigar that that person had made. And I'm trying to remember the details. And they said it was a particularly good cigar. I do remember it was a Patoro cigar, which mm. is a world cigar. Have you ever smoked a Patoro? That's the uh, Heike Kellner's uh, grandson, I believe, um, runs the brand for that. And one of, this was uh, something that, had, that happened, I think, at IPCPR last weekend. Um, and they were smoking it, and uh, a bit of ash fell off. And my friend was told, this is how you know this is a really fine cigar and really high quality tobacco. Taste the ash, it tastes like salt. <laughs> and he tasted the ash, he like patted it down a little bit, put it on his tongue, and he said it tasted salty. Have you ever heard this before? I have not. I have not either. Never heard it before at all. And then he said he tasted a Cuban cigar and it tasted like ash. It tasted terrible, like the ash from a Cuban cigar. All right, well, so this is this is a Padron cigar. I don't even really particularly want to do it because I think it's it seems like a it's a little salty. It's a little salty. Absolutely. Yeah. Whoa! You gotta try it. Yeah, I mean, it's just like, just do a little bit. There's one little tiny. Yeah. It's definitely salty. Right? It's like a, like a mellow salt and ash mixed together. Yeah. But it's salty. Like yeah. you wouldn't. Um, but I'm not gonna be licking the rest of my ashes. Exactly. The rest of my yeah. <laughs> and, and, and you're not gonna season, uh, you know, a piece of meat with uh, cigar ash either. Probably. No. Although I'm sure there's people out there that do shit like that. <laughs> they're collect. They're like, don't man, don't ash in the trash. Mm -hmm. Ash over here in my ash yeah, collector. I mean, I rub it all over my meat before I smoke it. And whatever, you know. <laughs> Absolutely. If yeah. you rub your cigar ash on your meat, let us know in the comments. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of cigars that uh, have a high nicotine strength. There is a Padron, we talked about it before, the, the uh, 50th anniversary, mm -hmm. Padron 50th, the hammer, the oh. one that comes in the humidor, okay. not, the, not the small Not the little 50s. hammer, yeah, because I smoked the little yeah. hammer, yeah. Which is a good cigar. I, I hope you enjoyed that cigar, because I... I'm not a big Padron fan, so... Okay. But did you enjoy it anyway? Not really. It's kind of a pricey cigar to not like, too. I know. Well, like we have talked about in the past, where we have spent 20 30 40 $50 on a cigar and not liked it, so... But, uh, so, I mean, I appreciate what they did with the cigar, though. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't to my palate. So, um, when that cigar first came out, um, it, it came in the 100 pound humidors, and they were impossible to, you know, to find. It was, it was either the whole humidor had to be all natural or all Maduro, right? Gotcha. And a lot of people who smoke Padrones really like the Maduro. I was one of those people. Like, if I went for a 64 or 26, I was going for the Maduro. I managed to get a hold of a natural on the 50th and the Maduro, smoked them both, and I much preferred the natural. Yeah, I didn't, you know, to be quite honest, I prefer the natural drones Just over the Maduro. In general, yeah. But I'll tell you, the first one that I ever smoked <clears throat> was at Cigar Warehouse. They got a, they got, didn't get the original humidor, but they got a refill mm -hmm. in there. And I think they were selling them for 55 if I'm not mistaken. And you're right. like, okay. All right, I was I'll like, try. I'll take a flyer. Yeah, it's supposed to be spectacular yeah. or whatever. It was, first of all, a three hour and 15 minute smoke. They're oh enormous. my God, was it like an A-size cigar? It is the same amount of tobacco as an A-size cigar. Okay. It's in a it's different a big, format. It's, it's a big cigar though. Box press and a little shorter, but that. Okay. Um, secondly, as a person who smokes cigars every day and never even really gets a nicotine buzz, I had to put the cigar down several times during that three hour and 15 minutes. I was drinking a Coke with it, so I had my sugar going on. 
my head was absolutely swimming. It might have been the strongest nicotine oh. cigar I've ever smoked in my life. But fantastic. Just a great you sure it wasn't cigar. the nicotine buzz that did that to you? <laughs> no, it really... <laughs> no, no, because before that kicked in, I was like, from the first puffs, it's one of those cigars, like from the yeah. opening puffs, you're like, no, this I, is no, a, I, this I is totally a get that. I totally get that, because like, uh, uh, yeah, like I, there's been a few times where you just like, you know, either open up a box of cigars, or you get that cigar, and you light that sucker up, and you take your first few drags on it, and you're like, this is something good. Yeah. This is, this is this different special. from a normal thing that I'm, you know, my daily whatever that I'm mm -hmm. doing or weekly or whatever. You're like, so I totally, I can totally get that. I mean, I totally understand that. So have you, okay, speaking of nicotine now. Well, before we okay. get to that, so the commonality between the 50th and this cigar is that they're individually numbered. Mm. So Padron will do this. They have some kind of cool technology that yeah. lets them individually number the bands. And George Padron knows his, I mean, yeah, I got a story on that too, but anyway. Um, and uh, the other thing about the uh, Padron 50th, I mean, we talked about the, the individually numbered, we talked about the, you know, the kind of headiness of it compared to this. I forget where I was going to go. Completely me I threw you off. What was I going to say? Oh, oh yeah, about the numbers. So the very first original uh, humidors that came out of the Padron 50th, the serial number is in red. Oh yeah. All of the other ones are in black. black yeah. Red so black. The, the refills and everything that came out after that original release are in black. There is a difference. The red ones are a cut above. And people say this all the time about original release cigars versus, you know, the next batch that comes out. People talked about that with, the uh, like, Eye of the Shark from Puente and the uh, Andalusian Bull, like, before it's a hit and after it's a hit, cigars being different. Uh, people are worried about that right now in the Cuban world with uh, Kate Jose. Jose yeah. Yeah. yeah, because they were, all the original batches were phenomenal, and now the 2019s are coming out, and I haven't smoked any yet. I don't know if you have um, any 2019s. I've barely smoked any 2018s so far. Um, but anyway, that's a that's a concern. But if you can find the ones with the red band, how I got my red banded drones was um, not long after they came out. Small batch cigar, Maximar, down in Orange mm -hmm. County, yeah. Yeah. Um, had like a, they had a special on them one day, and they were like sixty or eighty dollars or something. But it was original release. Oh, the red, and, yeah. On, on, on the red bands, and I think I bought two or three each of the natural and the girl. That was before I realized that I like the natural so much more. Um, and I still have a couple. So if you, have you smoked the hammer before? Just the little one. The little the one. Little so I will, I'll grab uh, one of mine and we'll do, maybe you do a puff pass. You only have one of each of the natural. You know, puff, 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 pass, <laughs> puff. So speaking of, speaking of. Uh, the nicotine. Yes. Have you smoked the pussy juice? I have not. Tell them what the pussy juice is so that people don't get offended more than they should be. Uh, okay, so our, our Toro Fuente brand, in their wisdom, they decided to make a cigar. That it has a real name. It's just called the PJ or whatever. And then or the Volva. They call it the Volva 2. Ugh, I haven't heard of that. I'm just saying. Anyway, so it's this really long, thin Lancero size cigar that's all a hero. And on the tip, it's kind of set up like this, but the tip is extended out with a hole in it. So you don't even cut it. Right. And you just like this. It's got stuff. like a tobacco, made, like a, a mouthpiece made of tobacco. Yeah, basically. basically, yeah, exactly. Like a mouthpiece made of tobacco. So, um, and it's a Lancero size, like a really long Panatella, really, like maybe a 30... Eight ring gauge, and you can't really buy them. Like you have to like have a connection, or Carlito needs to give you one, or whatever. Yes, yeah. and that cigar was sickeningly nicotine. It's all the hero. So. Oh my god. It's what you expect. Oh my god. I mean, the only time I was more uncomfortable smoking a cigar was being at the old Davidoff shop in Columbus Circle because that room was so small. I mean, it yeah. was just like, it was just, 
I would never smoke another one of those again. It was just so, to your, you know, you're like you, but you got a good experience. For me, it was just. It was a great experience. It was, it was all. Yeah, but it was all, it was just so. Much. How did it taste? It was not your not typical. Special. Yeah, it was not. It was more, yeah, like kind of like tobacco and just really just gritty. It was more like kind of like a Machismo cigar. Yes, I would kind think, of, you know, with that name and the Fuente thing yeah. and all the Lajero, it kind of fits that mold as like yeah. a cigar that's it's got a high amount of exclusivity, but it's not terribly good. But I still would love to smoke one. Yeah, that, that cigar. I should try it for myself. Um, yeah, my buddy down in Orange County got got a hold of that. He said, "You want to smoke one?" And I'm like. You know, we smoke that. Like, sure, I'll smoke it. It was sixty bucks, and uh, yeah. Seems like a pretty good price. Yeah, I mean, for being able to smoke it. So yeah. yeah. But uh, getting back to George Padron, so at the Davidoff shop in Columbus Circle back in the day when it was there, you know, I walk in. Hi, I'm George Padron. He hands me a 1964, and I start talking to him. And I go, you know, we start talking about box dates. Was this an event, or he just happened to be there? No, he was there because he was doing some other event somehow, or whatever. And then he stopped by the Davidoff shop, and he was like, kind of doing making the rounds, I guess, in New York at the mm -hmm. various lounges and stuff. But he actually could, he looked at the box, and he could tell the date and everything on the box from the codes that he knows mm -hmm. on there. But I look at the box, and it's like I don't know what the hell. So kind of like that old Cuban date code. Yeah. Right, but not as like even more opaque than that to anybody other than George Padron. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Hay's a good descriptor on that, like a sweet hay on there. Hey. But uh, but it's not saying hay on the tongue or hay on the palate or hay on the finish or just saying hay in the nose, right? Room knows something right home about. Yeah. So, yeah, anyway, I've been wanting to smoke this with you for a while now. You know what else this could be? I'm trying to find, because I really, I don't want this, these cigars to go to waste, and I'm trying to find a use for them. What about a really old man who's not supposed to smoke cigars anymore, but he's been smoking cigars forever? Sure. And has a well-developed palate and, you know, an appreciation for the more refined delicate flavors. Mm -hmm. This would be a good cigar for that guy. Sure. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, it'd be... This is no nicotine left in here. There's not. I mean, there. I mean, this is the first cigar of the day, and there's no punchiness to that cigar or anything like that. But it's a like really fine cigar. You can tell from the construction. It's really smooth. It's, it's really smooth. smooth. I love it when you, you give people a cigar. You know, you give a cigar. Like, hey, you want to, you a cigar smoker, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I smoke last cigar. Oh, here, try this one. Oh, it's really smooth. Get anything else? No, it's really smooth. Well, it's not the worst thing. It's it is, funny though. It is a go-to of people who don't smoke a lot. Though. Yeah. And people who don't retro. Yeah, it's it's funny though. It's kind of funny. Just tell me it's bitter or whatever, just, or something. Yeah. I mean, I like it tastes like tobacco. That's another one. Yeah. What does it taste like to you? Uh, tobacco. It tastes like a cigar. <laughs> yeah. I'm I like that one. <laughs> can you at least give me leather, cocoa, yeah. hay, like the basic or, stuff that you yeah. don't have to retrohale the taste? Yeah. Something. Coffee. Something. Just anything. <laughs> Other than smooth or tobacco. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. Yeah. But anyway. It's, it Those is, are people who just need to be taught how to retro out. Yeah, but they're, you know, I don't know. I, I'm just gonna defer on that whole thing. I think that it enhances the experience with the cigar when you retro a cigar, but um, you know, whether you do or don't. Um, well, there's no question it enhances the experiences. Yeah. 99% of the flavors. Yeah. I, 75, 80%, mm. somewhere in there. I, I'd go more of 75 to 80%. But still, 
you can still, I know, I know, you know, but, but uh, we, you can still taste a cigar. And the thing is, too, is when you're blowing the smoke out your mouth, you're still going to get some of that up your nose coming the other way. So, you know, <clears throat> I mean, but it does definitely make uh, the experience better sometimes. I mean, because if you're going to do that in Liga Pravada, I mean, you better have been retro for a long period of time because, I mean, that's going to blow your nose out. Yeah. It's I'm still waiting for a great transformative Liga Pravada experience um, for me. I just I haven't had one. I mean, I've smoked, I think I've smoked all of them. The Pigs and the L40 and the UF13. and that's, Yeah, it's like that. T52, the number nine. The various there rats. Is. Smoke the Velvet. Dirty Rat. Dirty Ratzilla. I think. And there's another rat. Um, I think there's another rat that was an exclusive to some hockey stadium down in Miami. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. I mean, um, you know, they make a lot of different cigars at Drew Estates. Oh, they yeah, they ton. Do. The Acid 20th Anniversary just came out. You ever smoked an Acid? I have smoked an Acid. It's very funky. I don't think I have. No. Oh. I've also smoked the La Rutin, or the Natural, as well, which has got kind of like a, it's got a chocolate, they really infuse it with like a chocolate kind of a vibe on there, whatever it is, cocoa. Like, it's like drinking a cup of hot cocoa to me, that, the La Rutin. Like in Germany or in Europe, they call it La Rutin because they can't call it natural because it's tobacco and it's like a sin to do that. So they had to, so they, you can't sell it as natural. So they just flip, if you flip natural around, it says La Rutin. I did not know that. That's yeah. weird. Yeah. So they, that's all he does. He just, that's not kind of a Jonathan Drew thing, I would imagine. And Jonathan Drew would like come yeah. up with something like that. Yeah. Like, oh, why don't we just like put the name around? And it's La Rutin now. Okay. And I think they sell them as La Rutin here now, too. I'm not sure. I've never, I don't think I've ever seen that. Maybe. Maybe they do. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I smoked the acid, I smoked that. I haven't smoked that the Alpha cigars, the they infuse it with, I don't know, some... Absinthe. Absinthe, yeah. <clears throat> I haven't done that. I smoked them. Yeah? Yeah. Not it's infused, thing. it's a flavored thing, yeah. you know, it is what it is, blah, blah, blah. But whatever, you know. It's why we, there's so many different things out there. But I think in all the Drew Estate cigars that... I've smoked, I think the Herrera Esteli for me is my favorite out of all of them, um, to be quite honest. I mean, and I like that Lancero, I really do. I like that, that's my, out of all of them. Because they have the under, I and mean, people are crazy about that Undercrown, right? That Undercrown, the Shade Grown, and the whatever, and all that kind of stuff. And then they got, um, they've got a bunch of stuff. The Kentucky Fire Cure one, mm -hmm. which to me, I would much rather smoke a Toscano if I was going to do that as, a, as opposed to... Yeah. Um, and I actually, I enjoy smoking the Toscano. I really do. We should smoke one. We should review one. I mean, it's a... Uh, do you have any in your infused bag or anything like that? <clears throat> no, I mean, I could just go down to high times and pick them up, you know, and pick up a thing of Toscano. Do you like a, a natural Toscano? Like, not one of the particularly flavored ones. I know they're all like sort of flavored. No, they're not. They're, they're not. They, the, but they're like sort of toasted and... Well, the thing is, okay, so the that. way that they cure the tobacco yeah. is be, is what adds the flavor to it. Right. They smoke it. Right. So... That's um, infused. To me, that's infused. Yeah, I mean, um, but they're all like that. I mean, it's all that mm -hmm. really smoky um, kind of a tobacco flavor to it in there. And it just, it is, that's what it is, but... To me, it's just, I don't know, it's it's enjoyable. Let's do one, and we'll, we'll do the whole, uh, you know, cutting it in half. Oh, you don't want to do a la maramana? My no. friends in Italy, they like that a la maramana, like, depending, you know, where you smoke the whole thing mm -hmm. whole. Mm -hmm. you know. But yeah, you mean more Clint Eastwood, like, you know? Yeah. Make my day. Well, he doesn't say that in the Spaghetti Western, so he... No. He's like, yeah. We, That's Dirty Harry. Yeah. But yeah, the, yeah. Okay, we can do that. What is it? What's a line from? Uh, I just saw the good bad. I mean, I watched those movies a lot. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Wanted in 14 counties of this state, the condemned is accused of the following crimes. Oh, and then the litany of crimes. Yeah. Hell of a thing, killing a man. 
<laughs> Take away everything he has and everything he's ever going to have. Mm. That's my favorite line from Unforgiven. I got nothing for you, man. Right. I got nothing for you. Do you feel like as we're as we're getting down and the strength is wrapping up on this, you're getting a little closer to how maybe this used to taste? Or is it just getting a little harsher and actually? Yeah, it's getting a little more of that yeah. on there as opposed to um, I to me, I, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah. So weird. You a band collector? No. <clears throat> I um, surprisingly no uh, no yellow in there for the age. Just is that it's the white. glue in there? Yeah. Just glue. Just glue. I do collect some bands. You have some collectible bands. I there's some bands that from cigars. It's like I think I'm gonna keep that band. I'll keep that 1492 band around for a while. I, uh, yeah, that one and the 1994 and the Cuban Tobacco 25th and the Dunhill. And then some of the older stuff. Um, I've got some band, but I'm not like a big crazy band guy like some people like. I know a guy, every cigar he smokes, he saves the band and puts it in a jar. My friend uh, Ulrich does that, except it's not a jar. It's a coffee table. Mm. And underneath the coffee table is like a depression, and you lift up the glass and you throw it in there, and that thing's getting full. And if he sees a band in the ashtray that you haven't done it, you're in trouble. Oh my gosh. Okay, well, Ulrich has never invited me over to his house, so. Oh, maybe you'll wrangle an invite someday. Maybe, or weasel an invite? Sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. <clears throat> Just, you know, it is what it is. I guess the band, taking the band off, sliding off, kind of doing yeah. a little to the rapper, the rapper. So, yeah, so, uh, how about that uh, Leonard kid that was in Toronto and... Hawaii. And then... Leonard. Wait, 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 wait where's he? I think he went to... Oh, he's Somewhere. a Clipper now. Somewhere in L.A. Kawhi Leonard, he's a Clipper now. Yeah. We talked about this in a previous video. He and you were you were selling me on Jerry like you didn't need really to sell me on Jerry West's you know the logo ability, um, as a GM but uh, between then and now he came up with a couple of players for the Clippers and I know everybody in LA is celebrating they're celebrating the whole LeBron and Anthony Davis See, thing I think that's not gonna work out. I don't think either of them are gonna work out I think the Clippers maybe has a little better chance. But the Lakers have such a history of putting together super teams that just immediately implode, right? Carl Malone and Gary Payton, Steve Nash and Dwight Howard. Kobe and Shaq worked, obviously, pretty well. Yeah. But, um... Well, then Magic and Kareem. Yeah, and but Bernie. that was, like, they Showtime. drafted Magic. <clears throat> Showtime. Yeah, Kobe, they drafted Kobe, too. Charlotte drafted Kobe. And then Kobe said, I won't play for you, and forced the trade to L.A. that night. So basically the Lakers drafted him. No. But anyway. Um, yeah, the thing is, is, you know, Clippers, I don't, maybe, it's going to have to get some chemistry and get going and everything like that. They're probably going to do pretty good this year, but, you know, you were talking about that formula where you get a few stars on the team and then you get all these contributing players and stuff like that. I don't think that's the formula anymore. Because the Clippers did really well this year. They took Golden State to what, six games, I think, or seven games this past this past uh, playoff. And we didn't know a single person on their team, right? <clears throat> and I think it's more of a team thing where you get the, but you know, they definitely have a couple of guys on there now that are pretty big stars. And um, I just think that they're gonna, you need a, that whole contributing. You mean like Kawhi Leonard? Yeah. Yeah. NBA champion. From the Why Toronto Leonard? Raptors, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, but gosh, man, I just so feel so sorry for those Celtics. I feel so bad for them. We'll be fine. I mean, and they got rid of, like, everybody. I mean, they, like... We lost two players. And you didn't get anything. 
No, we didn't get anything. Well, no, that's not true. We got Kemba Walker. Okay. Um, Who's that? Us basketball, professional basketball player. <laughs> and uh, we drafted, I think we had three draft picks. <clears throat> I think we kept at least two of them. Okay. Um, so, you know, no, no spectacular moves. But here's the other thing. The East is wide open. You think? Kevin Durant, uh, you know, <laughs> is, is in Brooklyn, but he's injured. So Brooklyn's not going to do anything this year. You have Milwaukee, still strong. You have the still kind of underperforming 76ers, even yeah, though that they was have a all big, that talent. Yeah, that was a big kind of thing there. And, you know, the, the Celtics are depleted. The Raptors are done. Um, it's wide open for second place. First place is going to come out of the West, you would figure, somewhere. I think it still might be the Warriors. Don't count um, Clay Thompson and Steph Curry and Draymond Green out. You know, I think the team that you really want to look at is the in the West would be the Pelicans. Pelicans? Yeah. The Pelicans. You know, uh, Zion is injured. He's not going to play for the rest of the summer league. That's fine. Keep rest him up. Get him healthy. Yeah, but he was injured during the year for Duke too. But they basically have the Lakers in New Orleans. I mean, all of those players from all the players that the Lakers drafted really high are now in New Orleans. So you're not looking at next year, you're looking at more long term. Yeah, but I, I would say that, um, especially if Zion can like get healthy and stay healthy. <clears throat> so I'm just saying that um, I would, the, the Pelicans will probably be a very interesting mm. team to watch next year. We'll see. I mean, Anthony Davis didn't leave for no reason. He knew Zion was coming and he still decided to leave. That organization is not impressive. Doesn't have a Jerry West. Yeah. Or a Danny Ainge. Yeah, well. I keep hoping Danny's going to find some way to like pull a rabbit out of the hat. He, he seemed to not do very much with all those draft picks that they had. And, um, and I'm, I'm hoping that he can do something to at least, you know, get the Celtics a one or two seed in the East at some point. If not, you know, make them a legitimate champion threat. Um, but that's it. Doesn't seem like it's going to happen right now. You'll see guys like Jason Tatum and uh, Jalen Brown. Um, you know, they'll start scoring twenty a game. But that's just because there's nobody else to score twenty a game. And when you're an NBA team, and teams routinely are scoring a hundred points a game, somebody's got to score twenty. Hmm. That's why Unless you don't you're wanna... playing the Clippers. Yeah, right. Because the Clippers have like I don't know how many uh, all defensive players. Hmm. Yeah, maybe. On their team. Yeah. I think they're going to shut people down. I don't think they're going to even have to score. Uh, it's still West Coast basketball. I'm just saying. Where's the D? I'm just saying. <laughs> I just said like a couple we'll weeks see. ago. You know, the, the, one of the things sure. that people are saying is um, the NBA is so much, there's so much more parity now. Mm -hmm. um, there's 10 teams that could potentially win a championship next year. It's not like last year where everybody was like, oh, it's going to be the Warriors. Well, and the, but the thing about the East, though, was is that Toronto, not a lot of people, I don't think, were like thinking Toronto was going to go all the way. Well, they knew it was going to be good with uh, But they figured Boston and, right. and Philly were going to be in the final, right. and they were going to be duking it out, and all these other teams like Indianapolis and whoever else was going to be like, you know, a second story on there, right? And... Crazy, to your point, period. Yeah, the Bucks do look like the team to beat. For the yeah, that's yeah. Future. I always forget about Milwaukee. Yeah, I always do. Yeah. So, Minnesota is Minnesota. They're, are they in the Carolina, east or the west? No, they're in the east. They're in the east. And then you've got um, well, the Bobcats. How about the Bobcats? How about them Bobcats? No. Yeah. How is it that like because. Doesn't Michael Jordan own the Bobcats? I mean, he was a pretty great player. I think I remember him putting up some numbers. He was a pretty great player. But I mean, I guess that I kind used of, to have his rookie card. His I did basketball too. Basketball rookie card. Which, the, which one, though? 86 87 Fleer. 
Okay, I had the 84 star. 84 star? Yes. That is his true rookie card. Mm -hmm. 86 Fleer is like, that was pumped up, you know, okay, because we have whatever the, the but... It's worth a lot of money. Uh, look up the, look up star number 101. For the, yeah, because there was only 10,000 of those sets made ever. I don't know how many boxes, thousands of boxes of the Fleer there were out there for the 86 Fleer. But a centered 101 is worth a lot of money. Like how much? I don't know. I would say, what, 100 grand? Something like that? The 86 is 87 Fleer, the Jordan rookie, is probably in the $50,000, $60,000 range. Yeah. But that's the one that all the card people pumped up. Because they're like, they said, well, the star is not a real card because there was only 10,000 of them made and blah, blah, blah. Well, they made the card. Mm -hmm. And to find a centered one, because they're all off center, like they're all like 9 and 9.5 and whatever it is. And um, yeah, I mean, it was like crazy um, hard to find a 10.10 on that, which the Fleer is the same way. It's really hard, I think, to find a centered Fleer mm -hmm. rookie, but there's so many more of the Fleers out there as composed to, I mean, ten, there's only 10,000 of those Jordan rookies of the star. That's it. That's right. all that was made. And they came in a packet. You had to, like, go to your card shop and order the pack, and then the whole, I had the whole set. I had the whole set in the original packs on that thing. So, um, yeah, I mean... To me, that's his original rookie. But to your point, I mean, that Fleer definitely had more um, chutzpah, I guess we would say, chutzpah, as compared to the... Sure, you can say that. Because you didn't even know about the star. I don't think I care about the star because I had the Fleer. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so you didn't care. It's like, I don't care. Star? Star what? Because the 86 87 Flair set had, because it hadn't come out with a basketball set in a few years, it had a whole bunch of rookies. Charles Barkley, Jordan, obviously, King Olajuwon, a whole bunch of guys. Well, they actually had come out with a basketball set the year before. It was the Star set. Well, I mean, Flair hadn't. Like, I'm just saying. <laughs> only two real credit card companies back in the day, Flair and Topps. Yeah. Star, I don't even know what Star is. What's this? It's a B. B? Yeah. Oh, the sun came out. Yeah. We were getting washed out a little bit. That's not too bad today. Yeah, not bad. We'll have to adjust that. But, yeah, the star, because the star has always been cheaper than the Fleer. Mm -hmm. Always has been. But that, I mean, the, I think Barclays rookie was in the 83, 84 star, I think. The, the Barclay rookie. We're going to have to let people know in the show notes that we're talking about, like, basketball and trading cards and shit again. It's good for SEO, right? For all that uh, all that Google money that we're going to be making off these uh, cigar review videos. Oh, yeah. That's something that we should talk about that's happened since the last time we did a video. Not that we were ever, you know, trying to monetize this. <laughs> I don't think it's, I mean, aside from whatever Google makes off of, uh, off of ads, like, no, nobody's making any... Uh, any revenue off of cigar videos. Cigar Obsession got crushed. I thought he was going to cry in that video. <laughs> I really he did. did. Cry in that I video. thought he was going to cry in that video because, like, you know, I, it, he was really upset. There's a thing, you know, like, and there's guys out there, like, I was reading the Half Mill article on that thing, um, Cigars Daily. There's a Cigars Daily, the guy, and I, I he, he broke off from. Um, well, there's a guy, Brian Reith, and him. They were originally did it, I forget, for some cigar company or whatever it is. And then he broke off from that. And then I guess Brian broke up because he was doing it with this girl. And then he broke off from them, too. TNT, I think. TNT Cigar Reviews. <laughs> anyway, so he, yeah, it was like, I looked up Cigars Daily. And I'm like, God damn, that guy's got like 50,000 subscribers on there. And then there's another guy. Is that more I... than us? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, it's way more. But, you know, he's a high-energy guy. He's a high-energy guy. But, um, and then there's, um, Should I Smoke This? The guy that does Should I Smoke This? And I've he, watched a few of those. He has, like, a lot of viewers, too. And doesn't he do, like, a, a short 60-second one? And then he does the full review, right? I'm pretty sure that's the guy. Right? Should I Smoke This? 
there's so many people doing reviews, but now, I mean, it's like, what's the, uh, you know, uh, what am I looking for? The incentive. What's the incentive? To do stuff. It's the same incentive you and I have always had. Well, we have that incentive, yeah, because we're not making any money on this shit. I mean, really, or, to be quite honest. Or plan to. I mean, you know. I mean, I do, on the other one, I have a Patreon account because, I mean, I'm producing this one and I'm producing the other one and then I'm flying all over the freaking planet. And so, um, it's like, if someone wants to leave me a tip for doing all that stuff and then, you know, some of the stuff I'm doing over there is like, whatever. That's great, but I'm not like, to your point, I'm not looking to cash in, I guess, so to speak, or whatever it is, so, um, anyway. But, I mean, I don't have a really good, steady job like you do, so, I'm not well, making the big steady. bucks. Let's put it that way, it's yeah. relatively steady. I'm not making the big bucks, because I'm a stewardess for United Airlines. Sounds glamorous. <laughs> Travel the world. All those handsome captains. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, working those red eyes, like getting on a plane tonight at 2,200, 2,300 hours, flying out to Newark, putting toothpicks in your eyes to stay <laughs> awake because you can, you're not allowed to go to sleep. <laughs> and then you get there at 7.30 in the morning, and then your hotel room's not ready because, mm -hmm. so you gotta wait around for a half sleep hour. Sleep lobby. Yeah, you're like prop yourself up against the wall. That's so glamorous. You're right. That is glamorous. Mm. Yeah. Eating airplane food. Oh, God. They just came out with this taco on the air. Oh, it's so... Oof. I mean, I'm thinking taco, like this chicken taco. It's chicken taco, and it's got like this mush inside. It's like this chicken mush, and then that shell, because you got to heat it up mm -hmm. in, the, in the convection oven. Mm -hmm. And it like gets all mushy and like crispy on the edges and then mushy on the inside. Hmm. Not a very good experience. I would probably all. like it. Is there salsa? Or no, you sauce? don't get salsa. No hot sauce? They give you one packet of Cholula. Oh, I love Cholula. I would probably like that. Really? Yeah, sounds good to me. Really? Like crispy? I'm hungry for it right mushy. now. Mushy? You're so full of shit. <laughs> You're so full of shit. Why? No, I can like that. There's no amount like of chalupa the... or tapatio or anything you could put on that thing that would make it taste I... any better than what it is. I like, have you ever had the uh, the fried, deep fried taco at Jack in the Box? I love those. Yeah. This is not like that. It's got mush inside it. I'm telling you. There's hardly anything to it. It's got a slice of a half a slice of American cheese in it. Right, but the difference between the, the Jack in the Box taco and this taco is that they're the shell like you get that that crunch crunchiness from the mm -hmm. taco and the right too. and that is what makes that and you get the grease coming off mm, of it right lots of grease right yeah. and that american cheese and then what used to be the hot ticket on that taco was you would get the regular 99 cent tacos you get two for 99 mm -hmm. so i would get six yeah. or, or three orders sure. right and then i would say give me the super taco salsa for the tacos, because these which super... comes in a little tub. Yes, yeah. and you would do that mixed with their regular taco sauce in there, and it would be like that's pretty good. I mean, it's not. You're really rolling. You're a high roller now. Right. I mean, it's like fabulous. It was. It was good. But they don't do the super taco anymore. But it still has that. I can still do that Jack in the Box taco sauce. Here is how I eat the. Uh... The Jack in the Box tacos. Regular taco, two for a dollar twenty or whatever it is, right? Usually I'll eat four of them and sometimes a uh, chicken sandwich, like their dollar menu chicken sandwich. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing you dip the taco in buttermilk ranch dressing. Oh, yeah. wow, okay. Not very taco like. Gives but it a creamy, delicious. creaminess yeah. to it there, yeah. Yeah, it adds that element that's not present in the original menu item. Okay, so now. Think of yourself at 36,000 feet. <laughs> and I get it. I order the tacos and I get them and I'm like, and, it's in, and it delicious. comes in a paper sack with a label on like the front that says taco. Mm -hmm. Right? So you tear open the sack and you look inside, you get two of these things, and then you touch the shell and it kind of. It's a meal. It's a meal. The fresh, it's called the fresh meal. Oh. And you touch the shell and it's so moist with that crap that it. Pieces stick to your fingers. 
Hmm. Right? Sounds good. So, so you get to lick your fingers you're off after. 36,000 feet. It's like a dessert. Dirty tray table. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Seriously. Like, I mean, anyway. But the hamburger's good. I like the hamburger. And they get do that Kensington uh, condiments, which are really cool. With hamburger. The ketchup. It's good. It's a hamburger. It's it's good. Mm -hmm. I like that. And some of the stuff in first class is pretty nice, too. I like that. I appreciate it. Um, Shouldn't it be? Those people are paying the big bucks. <laughs> yeah, but... <sighs> do you do... Is there a... How do you divide between, like, the, the attendants that do first class and coach and business? It depends. Where Just you... Just at a draw? Or well, no, you bid, for, or? you bid for a position. So on the continental side, which is where I came from, it all was by position. So if you got a trip... If you got a trip... Oh, you want the cigar? <laughs> what a jacket! I thought you were doing like a weird like trip. So when you're doing the trip, um, <laughs> Continental, you, you would bid for a trip, it would be on your line, and if you were FAO1, you would be first class galley. And then that's what you would be. On the United side, they had a purser and it was all by seniority order. So What did the purser do and how is that different from a flight attendant? So the person, we used to call it the lead flight attendant or the first flight attendant or the FA. They would call it a purser. And that's the person that makes the announcements and oh. reads the safety demo. So they're in charge of the flight attendants. Kind yeah, of. kind of like they're in charge of that flight. So there's a relatively well-known cigar guy who was a person on Lufthansa. Nino. Yeah. Yeah. Nino's flying cigar. Really good block. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, Nino. Yeah, I talked with him about that because, you know, and he's like retired and he's like, best thing I ever did. I'm like, okay. Yeah. He seems to be doing pretty well in his retirement, so. Yeah. He's, he's. He must have taken good care of him. He's got it down there and I'm sure their retirement's pretty good over there at Lufthansa. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, so Sit it's Jones. not luck of the draw. It's, now it's, you get a line and then you work that position. It's the continental way. Unless you're doing, like, I think the London-based flight attendants still do it where the purser divvies up by seniority order what the positions they want. And there's, I think in Honolulu, they do that too, in Honolulu base. But for the most part, it, you bid for that position, and then when you get it, you get it. So, yeah. Yep. Are you doing the show notes, by the way, or are you putting, like, the other stuff that we talk about in there? That's your job. Well, it's not getting done. I know it's not. I think we need that uh, intern we talked about. Well. Well. Um, I guess if you know anybody who's going to school out here and they need some, some credit and uh, they're interested in, you know, basic uh, video production and whatnot, um, shoot us a line and we'll hire you or your person as an intern pay. <laughs> intern pay. Well, there's definitely going to be cigars involved. Well, in cigars, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. no money. We ain't got none. Uh, you know, here's what we'll do. We'll start a Patreon just for the intern, and whatever comes through, just the intern gets it all. Okay. All right. I think that's fair. Okay. Yeah. And cigars. Okay. Los Angeles-based. Or willing to come to L.A. once or twice a week. For our videos. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, because yeah. Because somebody's got to do these show notes. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, our SEO is going to be for shit. I've been doing. I got the other thing, and I'm doing that, and I'm doing this, and editing videos, and I mean that Raz is still undone. The what? I've been doing that Raz video. Raz. I've been on that Raz video for like weeks now. Raz. Raz video. The Ramonion again, especially selected. Oh, Raz. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let's rest so this up. So R A S B E R R Y. Raspberry. There we go. I Raspberry. Use the Z, Z sound in that. But you R A A S S. Raz. Raz. So I just do one. I don't, I'm too No one simplified. says R-A-A-S-S. -S. I know that technically it's the Ramon Ionis, Ionis specially selected, but everybody says RAS, R-A-S-S. -S. That's RAS. Nobody says RAS. I'm Even the Germans don't say RAS. I'm English simplified. So raspberry, RAS. 
I just, I, I forget the S. I'm trying to think of another one that makes it sound like an S, but it's too much work. I think we're done with this. All right. Wait. Yeah. Are you done? I'm done with it. You sure? It's just, it's not, it doesn't have any flavor anymore. It's pretty, yeah. I mean, so, you know, someone's all hot, hot see totsy to want to get that cigar. What do you think? <laughs> I agree with that. My first real thumbs down on that. Yeah, I totally videos. agree with that. Like, I mean, even if it were a ten dollar cigar, I'd give it a thumbs down. Yeah, no, but it ain't no ten dollar cigar. No, but collectible wise, I'd say thumbs up. Smoking wise, thumbs down. I mean, it's beautiful if you want to have one. In and your you were collection. excited, like starting out. You were like, you were excited, and I told you, I gave you a little bit of a heads up. Like a few weeks back, and I'm like, well, you know, it's yeah. millennium and blah, we, blah, blah, blah. You could tell right from the first couple of puffs it wasn't. It's, there's nothing there anymore. It's anyway. too bad. It would have been amazing to smoke that, because I know the reviews scores on that when they came out were through, through the roof. There we go. But now, not so much. So, um, there's a good lesson there. Smoke, smoke them if you got them. When a cigar, you got a box of cigars, and they're smoking well, smoke them. Don't put them away. Smoke those. And then when you buy your new stuff, put those away and wait for them to get good. Check on them every six months or a year. Smoke one out of the box. Wait for them to get good. And then smoke them all. Yeah. Or, I guess. I mean, you, you're saying with New World stuff or any cigar anything, in general? Anything. Anything? Yeah. Yeah. Because well, uh, collecting, collecting cigars until they're not smokable anymore? I don't, I don't get that. Yeah, I mean, it's it's kind of like trying to um, predict the market or whatever it is. I mean, because there's certain cigars, though, that are, like, old and they're really, really good. Yeah, I know. So, but you gotta, you gotta try them every once in a while to see where they're at because stuff peaks, man, and it goes downhill. It does. Okay. And it, it's sad. This is a, was a little bit of a sad experience. Yeah. Well, anyway. Because it was, it was a tremendous cigar. We both don't know that because we never smoked the yeah. original. So, but anyway, this one, not so much. Anyway, that's it. So, we're out of here. Bye.